So, two upper 10 millimeters are off. The bottom two have been loosened. I should be able to just pick up and get the catalytic converter assembly out of here. There you have it. So there's a close up of the catalytic converter. Like I said, you can see the two upper tens, the bottom two, there's no holes. It's that whole clamping mechanism I'm gonna show you in a little while. That this actually just sits in and get caught right here and then squeeze tight. So that's why we only back, we back off the bottom two and we take the upper two off. And I'll show you more once we get the cylinder half head off so that way we get a little more easy access of showing you. Now, before we can get that engine mount off, we've got to support the engine assembly. Now, we're not going to be raising the engine or lowering the engine. We're just kind of keep it at a happy spot. So what you need to do is put something up under the engine to support it while you're taking the mount off. Now, you can go right here. All you got really up on here is the oil pan. Just if you're going to be using anything, use a block of wood. I like to use a long block of wood, like a 2x4. And that way I can go spread out the weight across it. That way if you're using a floor jack up under or if you're using a combination of blocks to support it or jack stand, just use you a block, a long 2x4 or anything kind of get some width to it. That way it distributes the weight evenly. Uh, just don't go excessively jacking up or going down. I just would stay in a happy spot and you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. Yes, it is an oil pan, but you only got so many places you can support it. If you do it, like I said, and spread out the weight, you won't have any problems. Now, if you try to put a jack stand in the center or a floor jack in the center, then yes, you will cause some damage possibly. Just spread it out by using a wooden block. Now, the engine mount right here is attached to both the frame of the vehicle and the adapter on the engine using a total of five 16 millimeter bolts. You've got the three obvious ones right here and right here on the frame rail you've got two as well. Once you get those off you can pull this whole assembly off and then there's the, I call it adapter, or the, the bracket that the engine mount bolts to that's got to come off as well. Reason why is we've got some bolts that are right behind there that go into the cylinder head we've got to have access. So go ahead and start backing them off. Now keep in mind we do have the engine supported with the wooden blocks up under. So now we can go ahead and take the five 16 millimeters off. and sit off this side. Now that the engine mount is out of the way, right here we got another mount that, or bracket, adapter, whatever you want to call it, that the mount actually bolted to the engine we need to take off. We've got a total of three 16 millimeter bolts right here. There's a 16 here, here, and here. And then we got a 13 right there. So we'll get those four bolts off and take this piece of aluminum out of the way so that we can get to the bolts that go into the cylinder head on the front through the timing cover. Right, I'm back at the last one. Here we go. As far as lengths, they're pretty much exactly the same. Of course, this one is the 13 millimeter. That will be different, so you can't get those mixed up as well. They go in the exact same, the exact same length, size, everything. Now, looking from underneath, right there, this 10 millimeter bolt actually goes into the head. Now, we cannot get access to that 10 millimeter bolt without taking the thermostat housing off. Uh, that's where the upper hose goes, radiator hose goes onto at the block. We got to take that off first so that we can get to that 10 millimeter. Now on the front here, we got that thermostat housing that we got to take off that we mentioned before because it's covering up one of the bolts we need to get to. It's just held in place with two 10 millimeter bolts. It's a plastic housing. It's got a rubber seal on it. When you take it off, look at the rubber seal, see if it's still expanded enough to where it's raised. You'll be fine. If you're worried about it, get you another seal for that. That's actually where our bleed screw is too. So we'll be using that at a later date when we get done with the job. But take the two 10 millimeters off here. Once we get those off, we've got some bolts that go from the timing cover into the cylinder head and everything on the front will be done. Down to the last one. Take care not to drop it. Once you get it off, just grab it firmly. 
give it a little quick jerk, and I take it off. And that's your thermostat. If you look real close, the seal actually stayed on in the plastic portion. So we'll just go ahead and reinstall it, and we'll be reusing this one because this one looks to be fine. Now for the bolts on the front timing cover that go onto the cylinder head that we haven't got off yet, we'll go ahead and show you on the replacement head where they are going to be located. This upper larger diameter hole right here was one of the 16 millimeters that the aluminum plate went on that the uh, actual engine mount gets attached with. That's what that is. So that's already off. And we do have two right here that we need to be taken off. So when you see that reference part, you know to look down, you'll see these two right here. We've got two right here. One of them is blocked by that thermostat housing. So make sure you get these two off. And then the outside perimeter right here, you got a total of three. So all together, three, two, that's five, six, seven, and this one's already off. So you got seven bolts you're gonna have to take off the front timing cover, and that's the only seven you'll have to take off. Now you know where they are on the replacement head. You go back to the engine, find their proper locations, and take them off as well. Alright, so now we've seen where the bolts are on the replacement head. Let's go ahead and reference to the engine itself. We already know that's the one that we took off for the engine mount, the 16 millimeter. We've got the two tins over here we gotta take loose all the way completely off. This one here, that one there. Now the one that we were talking about earlier that the thermostat housing was blocking is the one right up under here. We need that off and we need this one. And if you look down here, you can actually see the other remaining three right here. This one, this one, and this one. These three right here have to be taken off. Like I said, the two right here by the thermostat housing. And then we've got these two right here. Well, when you go to start taking these bolts off, you might notice they feel kind of like something's holding them. What it is, is a rubber spacer in there. I try to recommend taking each one of them out. There's one per bolt. Uh, just kind of work it. Usually I use the threads on the bolt to kind of work it out and kind of pry it out. Uh, that way I keep up with them. I don't want to put more than one in one of the holes in case one gets stuck and you put a bolt in, for example. I want to keep up with each one of them, so make sure you fish that little rubber bushing out using the threads of the bolt because each one of these is going to have one. Before I can take the cylinder head off, I do have a timing chain guide right here that has a T30 Torx. And I don't have a lot of room in here. Uh, I've got to get that T30 loosened and backed all the way out. Now it's long enough to where it's not going to come all the way out, but it will go to where it touches up the timing cover and it will be fully unthreaded from the head. So when I take the head off, that's not going to have a problem and it won't fall out. So I need to go ahead and get down in there. Works best if you get the shortest T30 you can find, put it in there and put a wrench on it to break it loose. That's what I'm gonna recommend using to take it off with. And before you bag that T30 out, what I'm gonna recommend when you're using that little bit, you don't want it to fall down inside, get your rag, kind of place it down in the passage here so that if you drop your T30, it's not going to fall down inside the engine and you got to take the timing cover off, which is completely defeating what we're trying to do here. Then you can grab your short T30 bit, get your quarter inch wrench, get it down in there, break it loose, and you can also go back with it that way. So now that I've backed it all the way out, it's up against the timing cover. That guide bolt cannot come out any further. It's not going to fall, so we're safe there, and the guide is no longer attached to the cylinder head. Now we've got all the bolts off, now we're ready to start removing the head. And we still need to make sure there's no harnesses attached to the head over here by the transmission. So we do have one capacitor, so this black connector right here, that will stay on the cylinder head. We'll take it off once we get the cylinder head off. There's a connector that went down on it, and that is a capacitor. So once you've got that disconnected, make sure all the rest of the harnesses are no longer attached to the cylinder head. And double check all the way around your perimeter that you did unplug the coolant temp sensor that the nothing the alternator is sitting there loose everything is around the perimeter has been taken care of cylinder head is attached with a total of eight 15 millimeter bolts we're going to start backing them all the way out now it's a matter of just lifting the head up now when we take the head up we need to pay a little careful attention over here to where the old filter housing assembly is because the cylinder head does kind of go around the corner there so when you go to take it off take your time you might have to come out at a little angle and come up with it
Now that the cylinder head's off, we can go ahead and take the old gasket. Just pick it up off the alignment dowels. The cylinder head gasket has a nail stamped on it, so this is the left side. It only needs to go one way. Can't put it upside down, there's no way it would work. So definitely make sure you get the L in the corner here to make sure you got the right side cylinder head. With the cylinder head off and the gasket, what we're gonna do is remove all the residual oil that's uh, in the galleys as well as the coolant that's down in the passage. I'm gonna suck them out using a fluid extractor I've got. Also, we're gonna make sure there's no fluids down in the threaded ports where the cylinder head bolts go. You do not want anything in there. If there's any fluids, when you're torquing down the cylinder head bolts, you will crack the block. Fluid will not compress. Now, when it's water and oil. So definitely make sure you give a nice little clean pass over the block here to make sure the surface is nice and clean. And make sure every one of the ports that the head bolt goes into is perfectly cleaned out and dry. That's what we're going to move on. And then also what I'll do is show you about replacing this gasket right here. It comes in the timing gasket set. This is the one we will be using. We won't be using the main gasket set because we did not take the cover off.